Hello, today I'm going to show you how to paint Mont Saint-Michel and I'm starting from the marshes and working up. I'm doing this wet into wet so it doesn't matter if anything touches, it'll give me a more random edge. I'm now moving on to the spit of grass that's around the bend of the estuary and all these areas that are flat will make the mount stand up further. Same space and then I can return and put the muddy borders in in a little while but it's always good to claim a space when there's water involved and the mud as i said i'm working from the bottom up so the next thing to add is the sea wall and then that gives me the shape of the island it's far too big to paint just in one go what i'm going to do is divide it crossways and divide it up and down so that i'm painting little sections at a time so I'm now moving on to the edges of the island and little fortifications and anything that's obvious. It's always easiest to put the obvious things in first. Some of the island's so steep it hasn't been built on, so I've got the chance to put in some jagged rocks, which will help me build up the tones for the rest of the buildings. I'm starting with a warm colour and then adding cooler colours on for the slight shadows that the jagged rock's causing. I will put a list of colours and hints and tips in the description. Next, I'm finding walls that go up the island. If you've been to the island, you walk up it anti-clockwise and there's lots of supporting walls and gaps that you can map out the island by. Now I'm moving further up and I'm going to put the abbey walls in, in up and down strokes. All the trees and roofs and things are done sideways and because it's such a big expanse, I'm doing it up and down and then it's easier to find the cross members and to divide the areas up. I'm blocking this in, in yellow ochre and then it's easier to shade from it. You can add a little bit of grey or a little bit of brown to get the shadows. I'm just touching each area once, not going back unless I've accidentally left a blob of paint and that will help sort out the contours later on. Moving on to the cottage roofs and there's lots of cottages in the village. I'm going to use a piece of scrap paper to show you with a flat brush how to just do sideways rectangles to show the shape of the roof. A flat brush is very useful for doing roofs. You can define the sharp corners and the angles more easily with just one stroke. I'm concentrating on the edge of the island so that I can get the shape and then I'll work my way further in and then I'll return to the left hand side and do exactly the same, although that's more trees than buildings. Moving up to the abbey roofs, they are more defined. So what I'm going to do is use a slightly stronger colour and just put in the obvious ones because many of them are overlapped by spires and towers and other roofs. And then working my way down, concentrating on the left hand side of the abbey and the island only, I'm finding any rock formations with light grey paint and anything else that's obvious like more paths. Moving down to the waterline while the rest of that's drying, I'm just trying to find anything that's obvious like a, a muddy tidal mark and that all helps with the tonal values. And there's a very interesting area of mud that looks like it might have been a historic walkway that's left. I mean the Abbey is celebrating its thousandth birthday this year so there's all sorts of historical things that you find when you're sketching and painting and I'm just following along the estuary bank along the tidal line finding anything that's a different tone that will all help with the complete picture. Having sorted out the tidal line, I can now add a few clumps of grass, which adds interest and depth to the foreground. Returning to the island, I can now add the foliage to the left-hand side, which will give more tones to the stonework when I proceed, something dark to bounce the colours against. I'm just working from top to bottom, 
following the contour of the island and just mixing different greens together. I've got a light one and a dark one, just playing them off against each other. And then just feathering the paint out with a little bit of water, just so that I've got a lost edge against the rock. And finally, while I'm there, putting the turret on the sea defences so that I can come back to that later. And I'm going to move now to the other side of the island and even that up. I find it's very useful to work on different areas at once and then you get a balanced picture develop. It's not just one bit's 90% finished and the other bit's still blank paper. I'm now ready to put the sky in and in order to do that, as there's so many spires and nooks and crannies, I'm going to turn the picture upside down. And I'm going round the contour of the island with a medium brush and water and just wetting the area adjacent to all the complicated bits so the paint will flow in by itself, which will give a more natural look. And the same with the other side. I'm going to make a very strong sky because when all the darks are on the buildings and the bushes, it will make it look much less dominant. As the spire goes straight to the top of the page, I'm starting either side of it with a warm blue. And then as I get further around, I'm going to change to a more turquoisey blue because often in summer, especially at the seaside, the sky is darker at the top than it is at the bottom. Then coming down, stop there, spread the paint out a little bit because it's a big sky, so I don't want it to be too even. So now I'm going back with the turquoise underneath, just to make it a bit brighter. And the same for the other side. And I'm going to turn it upside down again. so I don't put my hand in it. I'll just put some blue in. And then going down, turning it back the other way now. Just mixing the blues together so I've got a slightly different tone. And then turning the brush more towards its point at a steeper angle to go around the nooks and crannies, which are easier to do because I did wet the paper to start with. And then just move anything out that's left a line. Coming over to the other side, doing the same thing. Referring back to my sketch, I'm now going to put in the highlights just to separate some of the nooks and crannies of the Abbey. I'm doing this with just yellow ochre. There's no good place to start, so I think I'll start with somewhere easy that I can see there's a straight line there. I don't want to make it dark and sinister, so I'm just finding anything I can it's a little bit darker and just putting a little line in I mean it's been there a thousand years and some of it is more weathered than others just not doing anything difficult if I cut if it's not easy I'll leave it till later just to find certain areas and then coming across here there's some arches to declare those as easy and then the top building is darker and there's a, a couple of gable ends that I didn't put in my drawing when it's as complicated as this it's very difficult to get everything in and the gable end meets in the middle window so I could just put that in there's two but I'm putting one in for now till I'm more sure of it and then coming across there's some lovely buttress supports here that I can put in and some darker buildings that are slightly recessed. I'll just put in a rectangle to represent them at the moment. So now I've got to 
come round to the right, which has got more sunshine on it. So there's some dark on a tower and then there's lots of columns. More than I can count, there's six or seven to start with. So I need to be careful how I deal with those. But what I can do is put in the wall behind them and that makes them stand forward so I can identify them more and then put some colour on the very top of the tower here. And there's a couple more places that are sticking out a little bit but I say it's more sunny that side so I've got to be a little bit careful. So the next stage is to make the sea wall come forward and it is semi-circular. So I'll start with the turret. And it's little top. I'm putting it all in in Naples yellow and it's fortifications behind. Now I need to make it look circular. I need to add some colour to it. So I'm just going to use a tiny bit of homemade grey that was left on the palette. And just drop it in below the top wall. And round the edge. On both sides. And I can come back to that, but it's given it a start. Now the houses seem to be cream, so my standard reply for cream is Naples yellow, but very light. So I'll put those on and then it just saves the white paper looming out. And there's lots of random rock here, which is very light on the right. It's already had one coat and dark on the left. So what I'll do is put some light in on the right and a few dabs of what's left on the brush and stop at that point and go on to the dark houses nearby and they are grey so I'm just going to make up a little bit more of homemade grey just a tiny bit and just put the facades in the front bits and the homemade grey should make it look different to the roof it's quite dark. I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow to it and then coming round to the wall behind them. It's grey at the top, but not at the bottom. So I'm just going to add a grey line, clean the brush off and then add a little bit of very weak yellow ochre to the bottom. Because it would have all been made with a local stone. So I don't want to introduce another colour. And then there's another layer of wall that goes from beneath this house all the way to a turret here, which I haven't quite revealed yet. So I'll go back in with the wall behind. Below, It's got one top and bottom, this one has. So I'll put the wall in. And add again a little bit of yellow ochre to the bottom. And then go to the wall behind the house that is actually catching the sun. So it's more yellow ochre. So just drop that in and it'll help me find other things in a minute. There's a couple of trees there. What I will do is put the trees in quite soon because it's easier to map things off from them. But when it's a big picture like this, you, you just have to divide it up. And if you divide it up, it's easier to paint because you, you don't get lost. It's also a tall wall here. But that, that stands out so I can put that in. And there's, there isn't really any more wall that I can see easily from this view. So I can go back to the bottom wall, which is grey on the left. And then because it's catching the sun, it's quite yellowy towards the right. So I'm going to drop some homemade grey in and then a little bit of yellow ochre on top. So this I'm doing this in yellow ochre and there was already some down and Naples yellow. And then just yellow ochre at the back of it with a little bit of grey because it's slightly in shadow of the next turret. So I'll just make it recess a little bit. Clean the brush off and then back to the Naples yellow for the next turret. And that one creeps up a little bit. 
and then there's a lot of shadow under the wall so I'm just going to put in a darker line doesn't show very much at the moment but it will do and while that's drying I'll just put the end piece in which is quite grey and again that's got the line going under the wall all sorts of different angles and while that's still wet I'll drop in some Naples yellow underneath it and let them merge and all the colours are in harmony now and the reason I did the grass first was I wanted it all to be in harmony and there's some of the stonework showing under the bridge but I'll put the bridge in first and then define that so now I need to put some green in over here just a little bit more I said that I'd start with the ivy on the wall and go from the turret which I need to define a bit more everything happens gradually with a picture like this and the grass and things that are growing up are in shadow at the bottom so I'm just putting some slightly darker green at the bottom and a little bit of blue and then back to the yellow at the top and it'll find its own line and then over the house roof it's quite dark so I'm just going to add a little bit of indigo just a little bit and some yellow ochre just so it's all in harmony it's not a dramatic change and then down to the next house I'm leaving room for the odd chimney and that seems to come back over the wall so I'll do a few curved lines add a little bit of yellow so it doesn't look a lump and then this spiky tree growing out the top so I'm just going to put that in lightly and then I'll put some darker colour in in a little while and then coming up the side of the abbey it's in shadow but it's a little bit darker and I don't want to make it too dark at this stage I need to keep everything in harmony there's another spiky tree going over these supportive pieces and then round the turret almost looks like a copper beach and I'll just add a little bit of red and then drop some azillion crimson into it just so it's subtle and then lighter green as it goes right over the top of the wall and it goes up to this long line here and then drop some darker colour into it so obviously that area it's not just one plant and it does lip onto this very dark one so I'm just dropping in some darker colour where some of it's in its own shade and the turret needs a bit more work so I'm just going very gently around there and then the other side of the long line is a bit more and I'm just going to build up the whole picture like this just very gently I'm following the pattern of trees and shrubs up the walkway that goes anti-clockwise up to the abbey and that helps me work out the size of the trees and where they should be and any houses that I haven't found yet. So the trees are now drying and you can see that they follow the path and I'm now going down to the water line and putting in the walkway. It looks dark brown from my reference but it's very long so and it's a slight curve to it so what I'm doing is putting it in in small lengths not doing the whole thing at once to have better control underneath it there's lots of strong shadows so I want a cooler colour for the shadow so I'm just going to use a little bit more indigo in there and the shadow only comes to I'll mark it off against the building the house on the hill here so I've just got to put the shadow in just gently and I'm doing the line the other way just so that it looks different and there's a slightly bigger shadow here and then just lose the edge so now I'm going to go back to the abbey and put some more colours in on that just to try and help the tone so I've got a bigger brush and I'm going to use some Payne's Grey and French Ultramarine together 
just make the roofs a little bit darker in places. It was a question of identifying the roofs to start with. And some of them have got straight ends and others haven't. So bigger brush, slightly thicker paint. And then get I'm getting a number one brush now, just with water on. I'm going to make sure that I've got the edge because there's lots of things overlapping here and turrets and things and work my way up in the same method to the top so I'll put the main one in first and then come back to the others there's something in the view I've got that's sort of semi-hidden so I'm just gonna make a lighter mark to indicate it awful lot of complicated angles here so you have to start gently and then there's another roof forward of it and then coming to this side they're slightly lighter so I'm not loading the brush again and then one underneath it that is darker so less paint on the brush working it up to the, the join And it's got a rim round the bottom. So just going very gently up, very tentatively. And there's a couple of air vents or something sticking out. And then there's another line. I think this was delivered. I know the statue on top was delivered by a helicopter. There's footage of it somewhere, but it seems to be in separate parts. And again, there's some vents showing. And another join but I want to feather that back so cleaning and drying the brush just moving the paint fractionally whilst the roof's drying I'm just finding extra foliage to put darker tones on bring it out I don't want it to dominate so just doing it very gently and I'm going to put some yellow in to send it back so I'm going to use some chrome yellow a little bit in just to soften it and it'll break up the mass but it still look dark it's a little bit of everything just whatever will cling on to the seaward side of the rock I'm going along filling in a few more bushes and putting little speckles on them because they're so distant that they don't look solid so just got a mixture of warm and green, cool greens here and a little brush and the sun's coming from the right so I'm making the dark left a little bit darker. Now carrying on on that side I'm going to add these buttresses, there's four. And I'm just going to make the paint a little bit weaker because they're bigger and so they're not catching quite so much shadow. But they go down in three steps so the first one's slightly hidden by the tree and I'll just take some off slightly and then put the second one in there's four of them across and three down so whilst that's drying I can come down to a little turret and then the only way I can make it show is to make things around it darker so I've got some indigo and yellow and I'll just go in beside it. I'm now moving it onto the wall around the turret and again making it darker so that the turret shows. And then I'm back to more areas here that are rock. So I'll put two in in the dark grey and two in in Naples yellow. And then that separates the four chunks. And then I can blend them together a little bit and at the bottom it's quite lost in shadow so I'll go in with the dark mix that I used earlier which is in shadow so I'm going to do it in grey and then add some yellow ochre just for highlights so and there is a building hidden in there which I'll put in when it's dry but it's really all in shadow so I'll just bring the dark colour down to the man-made wall against the house and then just tickle it up a bit so it's got a lost edge. 
so that's all coming on nicely so this area now needs some attention to keep the picture balanced as i'm working on it so i need to find some more areas to put in i've put in lots of roofs so now i need to put in some building fronts so i need a stone color i'll start with the easy one this house on the top and there's a chimney attached to it, which I can just give the suggestion of. And then coming down to a house that's got a different aspect. And again, that's got a big chimney. And then there's houses facing bay that have got several stories. So I'm going to put those in as a shape for now. And there's another house here. So that's given me a good start. I don't want to put in 20 houses at once. You need to be sure of what you're doing. So that's evened up that corner. Now I need to work somewhere else. Now somebody's painted one cream and red. So I'll put the cream in with Naples yellow. And that's easy to find because it's underneath the house that's overhanging the sea. And there's a shop front as well. So a next house and some of them behind the turret. So I think the next one, I have to wait a minute till I've got dry paint. So I'm going to just do a roof to make sure that i know where i am and there's a tall wall that i can put in that's stone so i'll just go back to the yellow ochre it really is a question of searching when there's a whole village tucked in so closely so back to the turret and then i can map off more from that and there's a gable end showing and another little turret they keen on their turrets here another cream house has just sprung out cream house is below a triangle so that's a, that's the cream one so I've claimed those which has broken it up nicely my next step is to concentrate on the house in front and then bring the bottom of the abbey down as far as I can and that's made the abbey look much taller now and there's a bit here that I left because I was a bit lost with it so I'll put that in and the same on the edge here just fill all the gaps and then just to show the difference, this bit's catching the sunshine quite a lot. Get the flat brush, just pull some of the paint back a little bit. Not too much, just a little. I'm just going round with yellow and homemade grey and looking for any highlights and shadows. So I need to get more darks in so that I can judge the shadows and contours of the Abbey. So I'm now moving in with slightly darker paint which is Payne's Grey and French Ultramarine mixed together. I'm just putting in a few more details of the buildings that are in a prime position. I've already roughly mapped them out so just go back in a bit stronger which is easier when the position's already marked. Just moving the paint with a little water so it all helps get the detail and the scaling so I'm now concentrating on the middle and going back up now this walkway has got a much darker wall against it so I'll put that in and the foliage comes right to the other side I've just put a couple more houses in and I'm just finding shadows now there's a gable end that I can see here that I can put a shadow in and this one's got staging that the top layers come forward you see old english houses like this at times and then it's sort of odd angles and chimneys so for the chimneys i'm just for a difference i'm just going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to the mix and just find the most obvious chimneys now i've got the tower so that's a good marking point i'm just working my way along the rooftops trying to find a few more buildings and i want to separate them from the abbey itself so what i'm going to do is just use a very weak paint a little bit of yellow ochre mixed with a little bit of homemade gray just make a slightly weak color and just gently go over everything so that it sends it back so that when you're looking at it your eye is directed more towards the brighter abbey i've still got a few little areas to find but that just makes you look straight ahead rather than down there just make it a bit brighter and it's in shadow on the left so i'm just going to add a little bit of homemade gray 
and some Payne's Grey mixed together just to separate it from the colour of the roof and then that's matched by an equal shadow on the roof of the next building but I want that a little bit darker because it's a shadow on different surface it's not stone it's slate but just adding a little bit of Payne's Grey to that and there's also another shadow where it changes levels now I can go to the other side there's quite a lot of detail just put in a few lines it's so far away I can't put in too much detail but there are some windows and an awful lot of ornate stonework so what I need to do is just go back to the yellow ochre and put in areas around buttresses it's a little bit difficult so obviously this is very old concentrate on two gable ends that are here so I'm just going to use the homemade grey very weakly and I've got two triangles to put in at a tower so the point of the triangle is the middle window grey turret and then it comes down on its tower so I can put a shadow in first and then bring the roof with slightly weaker paint all the way to the end of this building I'm starting at the top it doesn't really matter where you start and then there's a shadow underneath this turret here that I can put in and then where the triangles are there's every imaginable shape because of the flying buttresses all sorts of different levels and then there's another building coming out from it and then there's a chimney so I'll stick the chimney in just in a warm colour and I've got to go from the chimney to the bottom of the next tower in order to keep the tones balanced evenly I've done a little bit more work to the bushes and roofs on this side of the paint having put a little bit more water in at a bolder colour I'm now going to balance it by adding some lemon yellow to the grass just a little streak in the middle just to highlight it make it look more of a summer's day because you look in and up and there's lots and lots of ornamentation on top so I'm going to start with yellow ochre again it's a good colour for highlighting things and there's some sort of balustrade that goes above this grey roof so I'm just going to add that in and it stops by the buildings that have got a triangle end showing and it continues past there to here and I need to add all sorts of flying buttresses and spikes and towers and things so what I need is a smaller brush and a slightly darker colours I'm going to put the shadows in first rather than the towers to start with there's some ones that just cover the roof that are a little bit tricky to put in so there's one that goes above the skyline which is a good starting point and it's fairly central so I'm just going to put that in in the negative just going around the edge of it and then there's a gap with flying buttresses and shadows of them and another one just going very thinly and that actually overlaps the roof slightly and then there's another three or four so I'm just going very gently because you can't see the uprights you can only see the different spikes on top so I'm just putting them in in the negative again just a suggestion of them and then when they're dry I'll come back and add a few nooks and crannies and then coming across homemade grey and a little bit of Naples yellow for a different colour. And then I can't put the buttress in because I don't want to make the whole building dark, but I can put the shadow in. And then moving across, I've got four arches. So I'll get slightly darker colour, slightly drier brush. So the only way I can find where it splits is where there's a shadow. So I'll just put the split in the roof in and then put the shadow in and then underneath the the right hand side of the roof there's another shadow so to start with there's a, a shadow from a buttress and then another buttress there's an arches are further up and now I need a slightly lighter colour because I might not so this comes up from the buttress that's one and there's its friend and another one and a fourth one so that's roughly done them now I'm just going to use a little bit of paint and just merge them into the stonework and I'll concentrate on doing the area above them which is darker and then they become more apparent so going across and there's three horizontal lines which I can pick out by another bush which is again darker with a big shadow so I'll put the shadow in first and then another buttress with a shadow and then there's a tower with a shadow 
you can't really see the tower until you put the shadow in and it brings it forward so that's now defined that area a little bit and put more emphasis on the area that's already dry to show the differences one color highlights another and then the part above it is lighter but down in the bottom is a big shadow so i'm just going to get lots of Payne's gray and french ultramarine on the brush and double check that I've got everything I need to around the, the arches above. One's almost invisible and one's got a big shadow so I'll do the big shadow first and then a much smaller shadow and then that one's nearly gone. Just use a little bit of water to pull them back. Whilst I'm waiting for the abbey to dry I'm just putting the legs on the bridge and that will pick out more darks on the island itself. I've just put a few more shadows on the sea wall and I'm now moving up to the staggered buttresses and putting more detail on them. It's an upright that's very slender. I'm going to use a slightly stronger paint to go around the edge of them because there is a shadow and then it comes out and the next one comes out and then it goes down completely straight and then out again and then down, and the trees get in the way then, and then finally out. So now that I've got them on, I can put a little bit of Indian yellow on for the light. You could always add a bit of orange to yellow ochre if you haven't got Indian yellow, but I've got to keep the tone separate. Can't have the whole thing painted in one colour because it won't show. So now I could do the grey wall above, and when it's dry, I can just tickle the edges and that stops. And then the sun's catching the rest, so it's quite yellow. So I'll go back to Naples yellow and add that. And some of the walls are quite grey and others are almost white. So the uprights are darker. They're not catching the sunlight so much. I've just been round and put on a few more highlights and shadows. And I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video and you'll go and visit Mont Saint-Michel yourself soon. Thank you very much for watching.